Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a Cold Chain Connect. I'm Liam Challenger. I'm going to be hosting uh, today's session. We've got a one here, as you can see, with the wonderful people from Face Change Solutions, who are going to be talking around bio PCM refrigeration, a lifeline to decarbonize and eliminate product waste. For those who aren't familiar with the Cold Chain Federation, we have over 250 companies in our membership and we are the lead in the UK's temperature controlled logistics industry trade body and you know members from across the country as well as multinational and global ones and we're going to have a wonderful range of accents doing today's cold chain connect as well to show our global reach don't worry we have over 475 uh, facilities in membership with 20,000 employees so thank you for joining us today for today's usual cold chain connect those who aren't familiar with the GoTo platform, you can ask any questions by just going onto the panel and we will do the Q&A at the side. There you go. So just feel free to add in anything as we go and we'll have a question and answer session at the end. I'm going to hand over to you, Govi, who is going to be leading today's presentation. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Liam. Can you hear me all right? Excellent. Brilliant. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good day, everyone. My name is Gobi Rao, I'm CEO of Face Change Solutions. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this webinar. Um, Ron uh, and myself and uh, Hywell from Williams are going to be sharing some, some very exciting information about uh, BioPCM and our uh, Apollo panel that we're launching in the UK, and it's a it's a cool way to decarbonize uh, the refrigeration. Pardon the pun here, but uh, it's a uh, pretty cool way to decarbonize the refrigeration refrigeration space. Uh, with that in mind, let me just go through um, uh, some quick introductions in here. Uh, with me today, um, we have Ron uh, Ron Hop, our chief revenue officer. I was going to be sharing the platform with us and uh, talking about product and how we want, want to get to market. And also joining us is our distributor partner, Hyle Thomas. Uh, welcome, Hyle, to join for joining us today. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you as well. Um, um, quick uh, introductions in here. Ron, you want to say a couple of words and then have it? Yeah, thank you, Gobi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited to have an opportunity to talk with this group. Uh, today about uh, the Apollo panel solution uh, and some of the su success we've seen with that over the last several years and uh, also talking about our, our partnership with Williams as we bring this product to to the UK so <clears throat> thank you for the for the uh, for the quick introduction Gobi. Brilliant thank you. I will. And a quick introduction for myself uh, I'm Howell Thomas I'm representing Williams Medical Supplies um, we are a primary care supplier, um, as Govi's touched on, and we will be launching the Apollo panel in the UK. Um, so I'll touch on Williams a little bit more later. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks, I will thank you. Thank you so much again. So um, who's face change? What do we do? And what's BioPCM? For those of you who are not familiar, very quick introduction. Uh, face change solutions, uh, we are a advanced materials manufacturer. Um, we make uh, face change solution materials. Um, that's engineered uh, from existing naturally available materials or even waste materials and we use some additives and we formulate phase change um, material in a wide range of temperatures. So as you can see here on the chart, um, minus 25, zero to minus 25. Uh, we also have two to eight degrees C and then a little higher in the range, 15 degrees 25 degrees and then 25 and above closer to 50. These are most commonly used solutions, phase chain solutions. Our BioPCM is a platform. Um, and today, specifically, uh, we want to address the 2 to 8. The CCRM application is the cold chain refrigeration and mobility space where we, we are beginning to see a lot of applications, especially given the the characteristics of, of BioPCM itself. So uh, we will be spending a lot of time on the 2 to 8 degrees today where 
we have piloted applications uh, in refrigeration market and we'll talk specifically about one specific application which we think is a blockbuster to help decarbonize but also more importantly to actually stop wasting medicines pharmaceuticals medicines vaccines etc you can also stretch that to food for right now we're focused on this medical pharmaceutical market ron is there something you want to add to this in terms of introduction we're you know we're we make products today in in, in north carolina um, and we're looking to expand into the rest of the world ron did you want to add something to that uh, I, Gobi, maybe the only thing i would add is is you know as we talk about re refrigeration and and protecting medicines, um, you know, really the concept extends beyond that to any uh, refrigeration application, freezer application. So we'll be very focused on on um, uh, our, our recent work with with NHS uh, and the outcomes there. But this has a much broader application. Um, uh, but a really, really good case study around what the power of bio PCM uh, is in in the refrigeration and, and uh, cold storage markets. Really. Thanks, John. Thank you. So, so that actually brings up a very good point, right? So the range is quite broad, and we are focused today on this refrigeration market based on this work we've done with uh, EHSN and NHS, and Williams is jumping in here to take this product to the market in the UK itself. Um, the range is quite broad, and, and the formulation has been perfected, and we've got uh, data around the world uh, in this specific application, which, which is uh, what we want to talk about here in, in greater detail. The Apollo panel, which is, uh, you know, obviously filled with uh, bio PCM, as you can see here, used specifically for uh, this refrigeration market. And Ron, if you want to kind of jump in and kind of walk us through some of the, what you see, some of the benefits in here and, and, and what the Apollo panel is, that will be brilliant and I'll chime in as well. Yeah, thanks, Toby. So, you know, over the last, uh, you know, two and a half, three years, um, you know, we've seen the Apollo panels uh, installed and rolled out to over 3,000 pharmacies across Canada and Israel, uh, and now bringing it to, to the UK. Um, and it's helped solve the challenge of maintaining temperature in the refrigerators that are used to store medicines, such as vaccines, biologics, other temperature sensitive drugs, uh, while also reducing the amount of energy used. And, and I've been, you know, my background is. Uh, primarily uh, over the last 20 years, helping to move um, uh, medicines, vaccines, biologics around the world in that, that middle stage um, from, from the point of distribution to the pharmacies. Um, but there is still that last step, not only the last mile, but the last, the last few feet, if you will, of getting a vaccine or a medicine to a patient. Um, what we've seen is the BioPCM uh, powered Apollo panels um, have been used to help protect medicines against temperature excursions in that last step, uh, particularly in situations where there's a mechanical failure, such as a power outage or a compressor failure in a refrigerator, things that can't really be planned for, but are very impactful at the, at the GP, at, at the pharmacy, um, where people now have to be taken off of their tasks of caring for patients and now need to start worrying about temperatures and refrigerators, how to protect the medicines, are they still viable? Um, and as, as we go through the conversation today, uh, and you can see an indication of it here in the chart below, that with Apollo panels, we can see six to eight times uh, longer protection for medicines holding temperatures in these refrigerators versus the refrigerators that do not implement the Apollo panels. So, um, we'll, we'll talk about the value of, the, of, of that as we go through, but the amount of waste that occurs globally, that occurs in the UK on an annual basis due to power outages and, and refrigerator failures is, is very high. And it, it's not just the dollar value, but it's the patient impact. It's not having medicines available uh, at the time to help improve the quality of, of someone's life. So uh, you're very excited about what the panels can do and the proven um, uh, and how we've been able to prove that through the collection of data over multiple trials. And, and Ron, the, the idea here also is while it's able to maintain, as you can see in the chart, uh, even when the compressor fails or power goes out or there's some other you know, calamity there, uh, a refrigerator without the panels reaches at eight degrees, a threshold probably in about uh, 45 minutes and then 
we're seeing there the panel, the refrigerator with the power panels stretches it all the way up to five and a half, six hours. Um, in addition to that resiliency of giving additional time, um, also isn't it you know uh, proven as you open the refrigerator a gazillion times, um, you know you're able to lower your energy consumption because the panels are maintaining the temperature in the refrigerator at the same level, even though you're opening the door of the refrigerator so many times to take the medicines. That's also like you know an additional benefit, right? Especially in pharmacies and GPs, as you were talking about. Yeah, having yeah, I mean, that recovery time when the refrigerator door is opened um, goes down significantly, and <clears throat> then the temperature is held more consistently over a longer period of time, so that the uh, compressors have to turn on less frequently. So it's 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 saving time, it's saving energy, it's it's allowing for a quicker recovery time, and reduces the mechanical load. And um, you know, Govi, when I think about you know the, the problems that the Apollo panels solve. Uh, thinking about what we heard in, in the market and and where the the Apollo pan, uh, excuse me the Apollo panels bring value, um, you know, is oftentimes people you know they, they they want that backup they want the security, but but oftentimes they're concerned about the safety that comes with implementing something new, especially in a system that comes in contact with with medicines. Um, and one of the values the Apollo panel brings is that since it is a bio-based solution, it's non-toxic, non-flammable, uh, it's very, very safe to use in these applications. Um, so there's other PCMs that, that uh, are made from different materials that may not hit that criteria. Um, there's other backup power solutions that could be implemented that, that aren't as safe to use. Um, the, the Apollo panel uh, with bio-PCM becomes a very um, uh, a comforting way to bring uh, that, that, that type of safety. Um, you know, another issue that, that we heard was the frustration from, from the market, from the, you know, from the doctor's offices, from the GPs, um, about waste, eliminating waste and, and eliminating the medicinal waste. Um, you know, somewhere close to 3 million, uh, 3 million pounds of, uh, medicine, of vaccines are wasted annually in the UK. And that's just the vaccines at the at, at that last step that does not include any other temperature sensitive medicines uh but the other frustration that that people would run into is the waste of time uh when the power goes out now your nurses your doctors your your administrative staff in, in these locations turn from being care providers to being logistics experts and they now have to disposition the way that the medicine is handled uh, they may need to contract the drug manufacturer to find out how long the drug can be out of temperature. Um, and all of these things take them away from what their primary responsibility is, uh, why they got into these professions. And this becomes a little personal for me in that my, my daughter's a nurse. I have multiple relatives that are nurses and, and talking to them about the disruption that comes when they're not able to focus their attention on the care of patients. Uh, is a, a a very big issue um, uh, in that part of the, in in that part of the healthcare um, uh, healthcare system. And 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 on the uh, benefits here, as you were talking about the safety, the elimination of waste, um, it's the panels, the power panels are extremely easy to install. Literally, you know, using zip ties, it takes about 45 minutes to install in a refrigerator, which is you know, remarkable. And the added benefit is there is no plumbing, there are no wires, and the Apollo panel, the bio PCM, doesn't depend on another electrical source to sort of you know, get started or a control system or no wiring, as an example. So ambient temperature, right? The refrigerator is cold, you know, it you know, gets charged, it stays there. And then as it gets warmed up, just in case, if, in case your you know, compressor goes out, then it kind of stores that heat and then it gets recharged again. It's practically maintenance free for the duration of its life. So that's the other beauty is the zero maintenance, no backup mm -hmm. power, no wiring required. And that's why the all in all, the savings mm -hmm. the labor register. And, and the other aspect here is uh, if, and because the compressor is cycling fewer times, uh, thanks to the bio PCM panels, uh, it lasts longer. So now you're extending the life of your equipment by another 10, 12%. So 
So which is again, it's almost like buying an insurance, right? You know, you're insuring a your 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 pharmaceuticals, your vaccines mm -hmm. are not wasted, and at the same time, uh, you know, you're continuing to save energy, you know, as you go through it. And the waste reduction is another huge, huge deal. Think about all the plastic and the glass and everything else that goes into the waste stream once you throw away the medicine. So that's what we have seen in 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 around the world, and I think that we are so excited about bringing this product along with Williams here to the UK as well. Um, Ron, you want to kind of talk a little bit about some of the other challenges that you started talking about uh, being taking time away from patients, especially as you talked about your daughter and her friends being nursing. Yeah, you know, and, I, and we kind of touched on it here, but when you think about, you know, the, the, the most, you know, probably the most impactful problem um, that the Apollo panel solved is keeping that focus on, on the patient without the worry of, of what happens when there is a failure and giving time um, to react and respond to, to any power failure. So, you know, it, it, you use the assumption that it's, it, it's early in the morning here in the, in the US, doctor's offices are starting to you know, prepare for their first round of patients. Uh, if there was a power failure at, at nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, um, and as you'll see from the data, that now gives the doctor's office, uh, you, you know, six, eight hours of time to react and respond. It could be the power comes back on, uh, could give them time to find alt alternative solutions, but but it gives them, I think, Gobi, the way you put it was great, was insurance. It gives that 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 respect of time to be able to to react and respond. Um, and you know, these are things that that just can't be planned for. No one wakes up in the morning and says, "Hey, my compressor is going to fail today." Uh, hey, there's going to be a power outage today. Um, I, I, the, the small town I live in um, here in Wisconsin in the U.S. Um, when it was hot this summer, we had a hot, uh, a, a several hot days uh, in excess of 40, 45, you know, 40-ish degrees, maybe a little bit more Celsius, and we would lose power. And the 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 pharmacy up the street from me is on the same part of the grid that we are on. So everyone turns on their air conditioners, a lot of power is being consumed. And I would talk to the pharmacist there uh, when I'd stopped to get other stuff, but now I was curious, uh, what do you do when the power goes out? And he goes, it, it's a, he goes, it becomes crazy. Um, we need to go take a shipper that we see, received the drugs in, um, unpack the, the, the cooler, put them into the box, hope that it holds temperature, um, and then as soon as the power comes back on, revert everything back into the refrigerator. Um, so he's a big advocate for these large pharmacy chains in the U.S. to want to roll out the Apollo panels when I described, well, what if you didn't have to do that? What if you had eight hours of time um, to react and respond to it? So, you know, these are the, you know, the most common challenges of the GP is, is the, the energy savings is a nice benefit. Um, the ease of use makes it, it simple and kind of set it and forget it approach. But really, yeah. it's about keeping that focus on on the patient, on providing that point of care service, even when um, there may be other challenges that need to be addressed. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Juan. Thank you. Because the the idea here of the insurance is we don't want we don't, we don't want to wait until a disaster happens to then think about insurance, right? This is being proactive. So and 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 I can see a lot of these uh, natural disasters, power failures happening worldwide, right? Whether it's here or whether it's in Asia, whether it's in Japan, parts of Japan, parts of you know Southeast Asia, in the UK. I believe last one there was a power outage in parts of the country where you know, they had a they had a storm uh, and, and power failure of sorts. So that's why this insurance is such a big thing in here. So let's talk a little bit about more specifics about the work that we're doing with NHS. If you want to kind of talk uh, run through this generally on a high level, uh, Ron, quickly in terms of the actual at a, the GP that uh, we actually have tried this at. Yeah. So this was a you know controlled study. Um, we had uh, Apollo panels uh, um, installed into a refrigerator, um, same refrigerator that was running without the Apollo panels. Um, you know, very, very well run, very controlled uh, type of experiment uh, where the goal was to look to reduce that workload that I just discussed. And as you can see from the results on the right hand side, um, in the top line there are, is, the, is the control, that's the refrigerator without the panels. Um, power would be cut to the refrigerators, um, and based on the location, top shelf to bottom shelf, um, you, you can see how long, how much longer the 
the refrigerator or the shelf in the refrigerator stayed at temperature. So these are individually monitored uh, locations within both refrigerator setups. Um, and, and as we get to the bottom shelf, you can see out here at eight hours, that bottom shelf finally crosses over the, uh, the, the eight degree mark. Um, so this gap uh, from the top set of lines to the bottom set of lines shows up if you, you, what significant impact that can have, even extending from you know, directionally 30 minutes on the top shelf in the refrigerator without the panels uh, to you know, right at two hours uh, for the top shelf with the panels. So um, regardless of location, very, very um, uh, impressive performance across that, across all of those locations. And um, we had a nurse uh, at, at one of the, the, the locations who was happy to share her views on it. You can read her words here. Um, around the, the, the positive impact that the Apollo panels can have on the day-to-day -day care of, of patients. Thanks, John. Thank you. That's uh, <clears throat> there's a pretty good testimonial from actual an actual user who wanted to kind of focus on the patients and not really be worried about getting a backup generator, or do this, and you know, figure out throwing away the medicines. A lot of time wasted in here, and so, so just for able to focus on patients, continue our work. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention uh, to our participants is uh, uh, there's a trial report. You see a link at the bottom. It's also will be available in the in the slides that we'll send out later on. So just FYI. Um, so kind of moving along in here, just going to give you a quick uh, heads up. So how do we get to this product in the UK? We're launching it. Uh, let me uh, hand over to uh, Iwell if you want to just introduce Williams and. Uh, yes, product's amazing. It's phenomenal. It works like a charm. It's an insurance. You know, saves headaches, saves money, saves carbon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how can we get the product? What? How can? What? What do we do here? So, I will. If you want to kind of quickly introduce Williams, that would be awesome. Yeah. So, I'm representing Williams Medical Supplies. As Govi touched on, we are the distributor in the UK for Apollo currently. Um, we've been in business around 35 years, uh, predominantly supplying into primary care. Uh, so GP practices, but we also have a corporate and uh, a wholesale division as well. Um, we deal with around 8,500 plus customers a year, GP practices, um, and we've just seen a massive synergy between the issues we're seeing in the GP office uh, and Apollo. So that's where we've sort of decided to partner up. Um, we offer a range of disposables, pharmaceuticals, equipment, and we also have a service division. Um, pharmaceuticals becoming a large portion of our business and a growing part, we've really seen that synergy there um, in helping reduce drug waste, reduce time wasted from the clinicians, um, and everything else with the decarbonization and net zero goals within the NHS. Um, so we will be listing the product um, and distributing it in the UK. Yeah. And, and um, I will, is there any other such insurance type of product you've seen that is kind of quietly does its energy efficiency and savings without actually having to buy a backup generator, right? You can always do that. No, no, this, uh, this product is unlike anything else we sell uh, or any of our services. Um, so we do service refrigeration units, um, but that's not, uh, as Gobi and Ron have touched on earlier, that's not insurance against a compressor failure or power outage. Um, and yeah, there's just a huge synergy between us both with our crossover. Excellent. Yeah, well, and, and we are so excited, uh, I will, about Williams, the whole partnership and what you've been able to provide for the community there in terms of the services and products and the still to be part of your, your mix as well. Uh, if you want to kind of talk through a little bit more about what you've heard and we'll, John and I will jump in as well in terms of the benefits of Apollo panels. Yeah, but with Apollo panels, there's so many benefits, it's quite difficult to list them into a unique sort of five points here is the, the main benefit to it. Um, but for me, the highlights of the day, it reduces energy usage, which in turn extends the life of your fridge as it's working less, uh, eliminates waste, just one power outage or compressor failure could cost potentially tens of thousands. Um, so, you, you know, for the cost, it's really worth it and reduce carbon footprint. As we all know, net zero is becoming a bigger and bigger thing 
especially within uh, the NHS, they have targets, I believe, before 2030 to reduce their carbon emissions severely. So this will help with that uh, and fits perfectly, really, into that sort of messaging. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, Ivor. And and as as Williams does, and and as Face Change as a company, we subscribe to sustainable development goals. Uh, while it meets several of these SDGs across the board, um, we highlighted four where we, as a community, as a GP community in the UK and elsewhere in the world, doctors' offices, hospitals, pharmacies in the Middle East and you know and Canada, and now beginning the UK as well. Uh, sustainable goal nine, which is, you know, talking about creating an infrastructure with innovative products, um, you know, making sure that we're building sustainable communities by lowering you know, energy consumption, lowering waste, which is a huge deal, which kind of drives the uh, SDG 13 in terms of climate action, right? So we're all contributing to lowering the carbon footprint. I mean, the waste stuff itself is huge. The amount of work that needs to get to, to, to eliminate the waste, to, to handle the waste, the diesel that goes into creating the power to destroy the waste separation. I mean, that whole you know life cycle cost becomes a huge deal, which we're not considering in many of these cases. And then last but not least is partnerships. Uh, we have our master distributor um, you know, in the UK, uh, for Seals and then Williams, who, who actually has got you know, a tremendous reputation in distribution of, of meaningful, sustainable products. So creating partnerships around the world, and we are looking for partnerships elsewhere in the world also, not just in the UK, et cetera. So we are psyched, we're totally thrilled to actually be in partner with, uh, with Williams in here. Um, and, and I just want to make sure that we leave enough time for questions. If, uh, if people have any questions, they can, they can contact uh, uh, Williams in the UK sales at uh, wms.co.uk and also go to the Face Change website. Um, before we close out with questions, William, um, I will, uh, uh, and, and Ron, did you want to add anything into the, uh, to the benefits of Apollo panels that we may not have touched on? No, Gavi, I think I, we, we've touched on, um, you, you know, the vast majority of the of the benefits that we see, and, and we've got some great real world application of it. Um, so I, I believe we we've, we've touched on most everything, unless I forgot something. Excellent, thanks, Ron. Thanks, I will appreciate that. Um, is this time to open? See if you have any questions, Liam. I see Liam is yes, back. No. Thank you, Bert. That was uh, perfect, folks. Thank you very much for all that information and detail. And you'll be glad to know we've got several questions to start off. So just a reminder to pop any questions into the question box. If you don't get a chance, we'll obviously um, get back to you as well if some inspiration hits you later in the day. So uh, I think you covered this in the presentation later on. But how long do you need to change the Apollo panels and at which temperature? So I believe it was 45 minutes, wasn't it, to install? But yeah, is at what temperature uh, are you looking to install those panels? Ron, you want to take that? I, I, I mean, Liam was breaking up on my end here, so I couldn't hear the full question. Yeah. Can you? So Liam, if I got the question correct, it's, it's how, how, what temperature do the panels need to be, be kept at? Um, yeah, yeah. So how long you need to, uh, how long you need to install them? Um, so, the, 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 oh, Gobi, were you going to say something? I thought you were about to speak. Okay. Good. Um, they, they can, you know, so the, the um, a pants essentially, you know, once they are installed, um, it's a set it and forget it um, type of approach. So, they, they do not need to be changed um, over time as long as your refrigerator monitoring continues to show that it is it, it's holding temperature. Um, and you continue to see um, the reduction in energy usage, um, that you know that the panels are, are working. Um, once installed, it takes uh, directionally, Govi, correct me if I get this wrong, but a couple of hours um, for the panels to be fully charged. Um, so four, 45 minutes or less to install, two hours for the panels to be fully charged, and then um, essentially you never have to think about it again. And, and depending upon the temperature set point of the refrigerator, Ron, uh, if oh, it's too yeah. cold, two hours works ideally. It may take a little bit longer if you're setting it at a six, eight degrees, etc. So, and once it's charged, you put it in there, and you can see it. it just you really don't have to do anything. 
So Liam, it's there and it's like a sh underneath the shelf, it just sits there and it does its piece. It charges, discharges. Like I said, literally, how many times do we go take our insurance policy and check to see if it's working? <laughs> well, this is literally, <laughs> you sign the document, you pay the fees every month, that's it. In our case, you know, so far, we're not asking anyone to pay us every month. It just pays for itself. So just to give you an idea, you buy it once, you put it there. Hope they answered your question, Liam. No, thank you. And a couple of questions have come in around the bio PCM aspect of it. So I'll just punch the, oh, how much uh, kg bio PCM goes into a panel? And what is the latent heat use of the bio PCM? Ron, you want to kind of take that? I mean, the, the Apollo panels itself, Ron, is uh, it's somewhere between one and a half to to three and a half uh, kilos, depending upon yeah. what part of the weight you're using. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The direction they're they're, they're two to three kilos. Um, latent heat um, is I, I'm going to pull this off the top of my head, but I think is directionally it's it's about 200 joules per gram. Um, yeah. uh, it, so that in the um you know, in the refrigeration formulation so um that would be directionally a, a, a correct number the energy density liam is to for us is to get anywhere north of 150 150 200 that's where we get it to because that's when you you're able to maintain the kind of temperature that you're looking for at the economics right you can always put a lot of material in there for us it's about economics make sure that even one energy i mean outage it pays for itself no, that's great. Thank you. And I'll uh, let any uh, sort of the attendees ask any more questions. But obviously, you, you've just talked about the panels being in a fridge in an office setting. Can they be used in other settings? So can they be used on the back of a truck or can they be used in a cold storage in a warehouse to help regulate temperature as well? Well, that's a great question, Liam. Um, this webinar is focused on lab refrigerators, GP refrigerators, et cetera, because of the wastage, et cetera. However, if you imagine a, a conditioned space, whether it's the back of a truck or it's a large warehouse, it's the same concept. You just have to make sure we put more material in there. So the material works like a charm. We've also piloted this in trucks. We're piloting this in, actually we're using this in cold storage warehouses as well. The, the concept is the same and it can be adapted for usage, et cetera. The, again, the, the wastage here and the focus here is to eliminate any pharmaceutical wastage in doctor's offices. And by the way, in a pharmacy or a, or a GP, GP practice, right, the, they open the door, refrigerator door several times, it, it taxes the compressor and you're talking about you know, a large energy consumption. We want to help decarbonize the environment by lowering that. That's why right off the bat, it makes perfect sense for us to focus on it. However, it can be used adaptable for any of these other applications that you talked about. I, I'll ask one more question and give the sort of attendees a chance to ask any final questions as well because I'm conscious of times. Um, how often do they need to be replaced or does it depend on the sort of place and uncertain circumstances of uh, the same? Um, technically, the panels do not have to be replaced as long as you have your refrigerator. Um, what we are, uh, our tests reveal we, the Panels can last for anywhere from five to seven years without any maintenance at all because it's just there. Uh, and then we'll go back and refresh these in, in, in due time. Give or take, right? That's kind of where, where we, are, we are at this point. And uh, Huel, for you, why, you know, why have Williams Medical and, you know, PTS started this partnership? I'm just going back to the points previous in the meeting. Uh, our motto is supporting your every day. Um, so what we're looking to do is make clinicians' life as easy as possible, save time, save wastage, and just generally help them in their busy roles. Um, we've seen the, the synergy between the drug wastage we're seeing in the UK, uh, especially with the instances we're having now of storms, uh, especially in Scotland last week. Um, so it's just a perfect fit, we think, for our product portfolio. Um, we work. Uh, closely with a number of medical refrigeration distributors uh, so there's a bit more further crossover there uh, and I think it'll just complement our range perfectly really when we look at the strengths we have in uh, refrigeration and in pharmaceuticals it just seems a perfect partnership really. 
No, fantastic. And uh, the final question from the audience. Uh, what happens if a panel was to be leaked or damaged? You know, what's that sort of replacement and is there an issue with that sort of the medicine, you know, in terms of contamination? Brilliant, great question. Um, even though we haven't had any of these, uh, the source of the material in is bio, it's naturally available materials. There is no, no toxic materials in our formulations. Um, in fact, we have uh, SDS sheets that actually show what's in there. Uh, the normal wipeout, you just wipe it out with, with you know, uh, if there is a leak, you just wipe it out. And then um, in the UK, obviously, Williams will replace the panel right off the bat. So as long as you're not fling frisbee with the with the panels, I think <laughs> should be in good shape there. Yeah. No good. And you know, this you know, you've obviously piqued people's interest because we've still got more questions coming in. So I will promise to make this the last one. Um how affordable is it, you know, for example, within remote communities such as Africa, where maybe the cold chain isn't as developed in us in other countries? But, uh, what was the question again? How is it useful in Africa? How affordable is the product, you oh, know? Of but in remote communities that may not have you know that constant power supply or issues with it thank you um so affordability is also a question and let ron chime in as well here in a second um it's a question of how much are we are wasting right so the answer to your question we are trying to set up partnerships and production in parts of the world where we can supply locally instead of shipping product all over the world which is also not very sustainable so we will make it affordable, absolutely. And even now to, to, to starters, uh, give you an idea, one, as Haiwal was talking about, one outage can actually make up for, for the, the cost, the amount of money you're spending on installing it in one refrigerator. So yes, it's highly affordable. And what we do is local pricing, where we're partnering with local folks to actually manufacture. Ron, is there anything else you add to that on the affordability piece? No, I think, I think you hit on the key point there, Govi, is that you, you know one power outage, um, you know can 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 pay for for the you know pay for this type of solution, um, the additional life that it adds to a refrigerator, um, you know the, it has a useful life if we can extend that by by you know let's say directionally we're we're taking out thirty percent of energy consumption, we extend the life by thirty percent, so it becomes a very very affordable solution. And I think Liam, you're, 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 to your question or the, the piece of the question around um, extending reach into in, in, into into harder reach places, I and mean, that has been a challenge um, for the you know for the for the WHO for the Gavi Foundation, um, and we'd be very excited to help solve that problem because then it becomes less about cost and more about impact. Um, but it is at the end of the day, it is a a very affordable solution compared to um, the other alternatives um, that are out there. And also it adds that, Gobi mentioned mobility, it adds a level of mobility that, that things like backup generation and such just don't bring to the, the equation. So um, I think when working in the system, um, you know, it just brings a huge amount of value relative to the cost. So to, to finally close out that, Liam, on affordability, uh, if you say, okay, we, we've never had a power outage, we'll never have a power outage, that's okay, I don't believe in insurance, which is okay. In which case, just by the energy saving and the extension of the life of the compressor, you know, the product will pay itself off, the system will pay itself off by you know, probably between two to three years, give or take. In some cases, if you're paying a lot, uh, you know, maybe 20 cents a kilowatt hour, or 30 cents a kilowatt hour, you probably will see an 18 to two year, 18 months to two year payback, if not maybe a two and a half, three year payback. So either way, it becomes very affordable. No, that's fantastic. And that's a great point, Gwen. So thank you again, all, all three of you for your presentation today. It was really interesting and insightful. And thank you to all the attendees for coming and for your contributions. Uh, the final plug from us is, um, you know, on 14th, 15th and 16th of November, we've got Cold Chain Energy Week. Mm. It's our most popular week of the year. And yeah, we've got three fantastic panels. I would highly recommend the solar panel chaired by me, but if you are sick of me, please do join Jane and Tom, who'll be hosting the other two panels throughout the week. All the details are on our website under the events page. And finally, it may be Halloween, but we can start scaring you by looking into 2024 and looking at our in-person event for next year. So please do add those dates to your diary. 
and as members you know we love to see you hopefully in person and not just at the end of a webcam so thank you again for the wonderful panelists today it's been brilliant and a really informative and interesting session and have a great tuesday everybody thank you and, and thanks to cold chain federation Liam. thank you so much again for hosting thank you all thanks for support goodbye bye, bye.